We start off with a robotic piano layered on top of a virtual piano. Getting a robotic piano sound was actually a pretty easy process and super affordable. All I had to do was write a MIDI file and send it to Rack Recording Studios. They've got this fancy Yamaha piano and some fancy microphones, and it's only 10 bucks for every minute of audio you want recorded. That's a great deal, but it comes with caveats. I'm not a piano player, so I wrote everything in a MIDI editor. That means I'm not necessarily obeying the laws of physics when it comes to things like how long it takes for a key to rebound after being pressed. I tried to make it realistic, but I still ended up with these timing issues which make the robotic piano play off beat. It's cheap enough for me to just keep doing retakes, but I thought it might be nice to layer the robotic piano on top of the MIDI signal. If I was artsy fartsy, uh, maybe I'd say it represents the interplay between expectations and outcomes at a point in the album where we start to embrace reality. But I'm not artsy fartsy. The timing offset between the two pianos, uh, the virtual one and the robotic one, it uh, links the song back to Nug in the Mine, which has the same arpeggio progression. Maybe that's all retroactive justification, but uh, even if it is, I do think I like it better that way, and that's the beauty of being open to pivoting artistically. Anyway, I tried to lean into the fact that I was using a robotic piano, and I made some parts that are impossible for a human to play because you'd need like 50 fingers. Or you'd need to be impossibly fast. I also kind of wanted to test the limits of the piano. Like, I tried to see how fast it could play consecutive notes. Hmm. Honestly, uh, the robotic piano really struggled in a lot of places I thought it would nail. I don't think that would have happened if I actually performed the part on a MIDI piano, though. I think the robotic piano was probably designed to reproduce human playing, not some guy using a computer program to arrange notes. I actually like how the robotic piano turned out all by itself, even if it really struggled. Probably just like in an analytical way though. I'll isolate the robotic piano in another video if you want to check it out. So after two rounds of the arpeggios, where the energy steadily builds and climaxes, we settle into a part that uses something called a shepherd scale. A shepherd scale is like the audio equivalent of a barber pole effect. Like, it looks like the stripes are rising forever, but obviously it's just rotating. I think the audio version has more of an interesting effect though. I remember trying to climb the infinite stairs in Mario 64 while this song played. Like, the stairs kept coming, but I never got any further from the floor I came from. The song that plays while Mario is running also keeps going up but never seems to move. My shepherd scale is kind of like that, but I go from high to low instead of low to high. So I made a melody that descends to very low notes while also fading out, and at the same time I fade in that same melody coming from a very quiet high note. If you have a melody that fades in from a high note and fades out at low notes, and you stack a couple of those on top of each other, you end up with a sound where the low notes are constantly being faded out and the high notes are constantly being faded in. I don't think my version works very well, but when it's done a little better, it gives this illusion of moving down or up uh, while staying in the same place. I should have made a longer melody to blend everything together a little better because I think the repetition is a little too obvious in my version. So just look up Mario 64 looping steps if you want to hear an example that's done well. Okay, we've arrived at what I would consider the most interesting part of the song, in a technical sense. I take the shepherd scale descent and I slowly break it apart by removing one sine wave at a time. I really like this part because it essentially proves that you can construct any signal out of sine waves. Maybe that doesn't sound all that crazy, but let me try to explain why it's so amazing. Because 
I'm not saying chop off a piece of this sine wave and that sine wave and stitch them together. Obviously, we could cut and paste parts like that to make any signal. What I'm saying is you can create any sound by overlapping sine waves. So let's say we want to make the sound of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Start by playing one sine wave for 17 minutes. But actually, play two sine waves at the same time. Actually, play three sine waves. Nope, four. That would be kind of like playing one chord on an organ for 17 minutes. But actually, let's make that chord really complicated with thousands of notes. So imagine you get a ton of people together to play that super big chord and hold it for 17 minutes. When you finally go to hit the chord, it doesn't sound like an organ. It sounds like Martin Luther King's full 17 minute I have a dream speech. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up. Come on, that's magic. It doesn't matter what the sound is, we can make a chord that will reproduce it. We could play a chord that comes out as 10,000 years of silence, and then the sound of a single clap, and then 10,000 more years of silence. Check out this animation. This is showing how you can stack sine waves to make any arbitrary function. I should say though, this chord would have to be played perfectly. Like, you would need to play each note at the right volume and at the right phase, which just means different notes need to start at different points in their cycle. Also, the notes would need to be tuned exactly right. But if you can get all that right, the waves will interfere constructively and destructively in exactly the right way to make any sound you want. And if you want to know what those notes need to be, how loud they need to be, and what phase they need to start at, all you have to do is take the Fourier transform. That's how I was able to strip this piano down one frequency at a time. I took the Fourier transform of my piano signal, and then I played all the frequencies at the right volume with the right phase. The piano you're hearing right now is not actually a piano recording. It is literally generated from a program that I made that just plays a bunch of sine waves at the same time. Then all I have to do is start turning off the sine waves one by one until I'm just left with one. So then I shift this frequency into another frequency and I start adding in different sine waves. After I add an adequate number of sine waves, you can start to hear it. Kind of sounds like a voice. And by the end, I'm adding in a bunch of very high frequencies that are really quiet, which brings the vocals really into focus. And that leads us into the last song on the album. If you'd like to hear this song without me interrupting it, I'll put a link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.